third uh, uh, Buddhist World uh, Conference in Hong Kong. And uh, there uh, uh, was uh, uh, so many uh, uh, subjects uh, for us to discuss. And uh, finally, they celebrate Buddha's birthday in Hong Kong. Uh, nowadays, uh, the birthday of Buddha uh, uh, is a public uh, holiday. Uh, so they had a very, very uh, big event in Hong Kong. Perhaps three, uh, 300,000 people went to the stadium uh, to uh, pay respect to Buddha's prayers. Uh, which originated from India and China. Uh, they uh, uh, have uh, a group of Buddhist monks carry the relics uh, to Hong Kong. So I, I was there, uh, uh, so many uh, uh, members of our temple, uh, they came up with this event. And many of them, they are very joyful. And uh, uh, also myself, it was a very uh, good experience to witness this kind of uh, activities. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to do my best uh, to uh, 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 help uh, the group to study Gangnam Sutra. Uh, because of the jet lag, my head is still in the air. <laughs> Sometimes I say I want to think in this, but uh, somehow the mind is all thinking in a different way. Uh, yeah, it's still a little uh, uh, dizzy sometimes, but uh, right now, at this moment, I feel I'm fine. Yeah. So I do want to cherish this opportunity. Let's study Dhamma Sutra. Today we are going to study chapter 10 and chapter 11. Um, if you have the copy of the sutra, I'd like to invite you to turn to uh, chapter number 10. Uh, uh, we are going to see numbers uh, between the paragraphs. So turn to the page. When you see 10, we start from there. And then today, uh, who would like to read uh, uh, number chapter 10 for us? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, the Buddha asked Subhuti, in ancient times when the Tathagata practiced under Buddha Dhimmakara, did he attain anything? Subhuti answered, no world only one. In ancient times when the Tathagata was practicing under Buddha Dhimmakara, he did not attain anything. What do you think, Subhuti? Is the Bodhisattva create a serene and beautiful Buddha field? No world only one. Why? To create a serene and beautiful Buddha field is, in, is not in fact creating a serene and beautiful Buddha field. That is why it is called creating a serene and beautiful Buddha field. The Buddha said, So, Subhuti, all the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, should give rise to a pure and clear intention in the spirit. When they give rise to this intention, they should not rely on forms, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile objects or objects of mind. They should give rise to an intention with their minds not dwelling anywhere. Subhuti, if there were someone with a body as big as Mount Sumeru, would you say that his was a large body? Subhuti answered, yes, Lord Honor One, very large. Why? What the Tathagata says is not a large body. That is known as a large body. Thank you, man. In this chapter, uh, we're going to find there are many uh, important concepts, important teachings uh, from Buddha. The first important teaching is uh, let's uh, verify the uh, idea of gain and a loss. Gain and loss. When you do business, you always think, I want to earn more money. I want to gain something. When you go to Las Vegas and play, uh, what do you call it, uh, the machine, oh, I'm going to win. I wanted to win. I don't want to you know, uh, get lost. And 
And uh, the same thing, when you come to the temple and uh, practice uh, uh, meditation or uh, read the sutras or listen to lectures, in our minds, we always think, I wanted to gain something. I wanted to attain certain uh, uh, stage. Actually, it's very normal for us to think in this way. Yeah, we cannot say that uh, when we send our kids to go to school, and the kids say, I don't want to gain anything. Actually, in certain level, it's very correct. It's very normal for us to think in this way. But the more we are experienced in life, the more opportunities that we have uh, uh, to face all kinds of uh, facts around us, can you really say what is gain, what is loss? And uh, gaining and uh, uh, losing, how are you going to identify those facts correctly? Actually, if we analyze everything around us, sometimes gaining is losing. Losing is gaining. It's always conditional existence. We cannot find anything exist by itself. We call this gain, or we call that loss. So it's very interesting for us to continue to clarify this concept. Long time ago, when I came to uh, Houston, I joined Texas Buddhist Association. Because I was so young, and uh, I told myself the purpose for me to come to the States was uh, I wanted to learn English only. After two years, maybe I will be uh, 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 have enough ability to read. Then I will go back to Taiwan to continue on my own study on Buddhism. So that was a kind of uh, thoughts that I had uh, in those years. But after I moved to Houston, and uh, the temple needed me to stay, and uh, I had to clean the temple, to conduct a service, to cut grass, and to meet people, I felt I got lost. Uh, I'm losing my time, my energy on something I don't want to, uh, uh, to, to do. So it, it was um, a struggle for me in the first few years. I couldn't uh, adjust myself right away. So when we moved to a new place, and uh, you did not prepare to stay there for a long time, and uh, you did not prepare yourself to do things uh, uh, that you don't expect, then suddenly you feel I lost my purpose. And I lost my, something I want to get. I wanted to go to school in New York. I did not want to stay in Houston to participate in the temples uh, uh, activities. So the way I uh, think is not the way actually I'm facing in the reality. But after five years, I slowly, slowly adjust myself and slowly, you know, clear my mind. Then I uh, told myself, why I, I, uh, I don't change my attitude toward this reality. Instead of thinking, losing my, uh, uh, my time, my energy on something, why I change my mind, then use this opportunity to create new uh, conditions for myself and for the temple. At the same time, I told myself, let me continue to learn English. So whenever I have a chance to visit neighbors around the temple on Land Road near 288, I will visit those American friends. They welcome me to go to their homes and uh, uh, allow me to stay as long as I wanted to. And it was a good opportunity for me to learn English. <laughs> and uh, after I 
uh, actually uh, participate Texas Buddhist Association for some time, I started to notice that uh, as a monk in the States, we have certain respon uh, respon uh, responsibility to accomplish. So finally, we built this Jin Buddha temple. And also, uh, a few years ago, we built Buddhist temple. So sometimes, gaining and losing, if we don't understand it carefully, uh, actually, when we wanted to gain something, it creates obstacles for us. Yeah. And also, we are always afraid of losing. We don't want to, uh, uh, to lose something we wanted to keep. But if we can free ourselves in a certain way, actually, there's no uh, uh, real, loose, uh, real loss, real loss, real loss. Everything can be positive. Yes. In this sutra, the Buddha asked Sabuhi, in ancient times, when the Tathagata practiced and the Buddha, the Pankara, did he attain anything? The Pankara, the Pankara, uh, when we translate into uh, uh, Chinese, I think, in Chinese, a uh, Diamond Sutra translation, it says, uh, Lightning Lamp Buddha. His name is Lightning Lamp. A lamp is uh, like uh, 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 having lights on it. Lightning Lamp. And Shakyamuni Buddha was a student of this Buddha. He learned a lot from this uh, Dipankara Buddha for many, many years. Of course, he attained something there. Yeah, according to other uh, uh, sutras, it says that uh, Shakyamuni Buddha actually achieved the stage of um, san, uh, sanyata, the stage of sanyata. He actually fully understands there's no permanent inheritance in anything, the empty nature of everything, of things. So actually, Shakyamuni Buddha fully understood this stage at the time. So when we compare to previous experience, previous wisdom, of course, Shakyamuni Buddha achieved something, learned something from this uh, Dipankara movement. But over here, Sabuti answered, no world honored one in ancient times when the Tathagata Tathagata is another title for Shakyamuni Buddha. Buddha is one title to describe uh, 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 enlightened one. And also Tathagata is another title for Buddha. Tathagata was practicing and the Buddha, the Pankara, he did not attain anything. Let's think in this uh, teaching for a while. Why Sabuti answer in this way? He did not attain anything. He didn't attain anything. Let's analyze this sentence. Why is the Buddha answer the Buddha in this way? Yeah. You did not attain anything during those ancient times. You learned from the uh, Pankara uh, uh, Buddha. Yes. Even though he attained something, but he was not attached to the body. Yes. He, he was just, uh, he was not attached to the body. That's right. That's right. First, first, when we say I wanted to attain something, I wanted to attain nirvana. I wanted to uh, get a title as a vice president of Texas Buddhist Association. There are something that exist in your mind. Okay, first, there is a touchment of I. Is it true? There is a touchment of I. Without this attachment, who is going to get a title? Who is going to attain this kind of achievement? So the first is, uh, you have to have 
the idea of I. Somehow, Shakyamuni Buddha, when he attained this stage, actually he un understood there's no real I exist. There's no more I. No I at, at all. And also, how about yeah, the title that I'm having right now? Uh, the effect of uh, American body center. Can you find anything that is not movable, that is very stable, that is permanent, that is uh, 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 exists by itself alone, without conditions that we call American uh, the effect of American body center? Can you find anything like that? In a reality, we cannot find this. Without this body, this person, without the center in water county, without people, without a group, where is body center? Where is you know, the abbot of American body center? So anything, any title, any names that we have in our minds, actually it exists conditionally with other elements. Yeah. So everything we see, everything we hear, everything we touch is all conditional. When we understand these facts, we don't want it to attach on any phenomena. So we can be free. We can be free from this kind of a practice. Otherwise, when I attach to my title, attach to things around me, then I am uh, uh, in uh, the, the condition being blocked by those uh, uh, phenomena. So that's why today, after so many years, I uh, seldom to ask me, what can I gain from the temple? What can I gain from Bodhi Center? I don't use this kind of thoughts like before. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, when I was younger, I always think, what can I gain? What can I achieve? But nowadays, I just wanted to do whatever I can do. Because this is also very important teaching of the Buddha. Buddha said, as long as you practice it right, as long as you think right, mm -hmm. as long as you sow the good seeds, mm -hmm. you are going to harvest good consequence in the future. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. anything. So nowadays, the question that I, I'm going to continue to uh, ask myself is, what can I do? What can I, uh, uh, how can I serve the temple? How can I, uh, you know, improve, uh, 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 improve uh, uh, myself by uh, having this kind of a surroundings? And I, I'm going to do uh, whatever I can do without asking that what kind of consequence that I'm going to get. So in this kind of attitude, actually, I discover I'm freer, I'm lighter. It's easier for me to participate a group. Uh, activity. Uh, uh, this is uh, something I wanted to share with you from this paragraph. And uh, let's move to uh, uh, the center uh, uh, lines. What do you think is a Buddha? Does a Bodhisattva create a uh, serene and beautiful Buddha feel? Okay. In Buddhism, uh, if you say, I'm a Bodhisattva, I wanted to be a Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva means you wanted to cultivate your loving kindness and compassion to others. So this is a very uh, uh, wonderful practice, also very essential in Mahayana Buddhism. In Mahayana Buddhism, we don't encourage Buddhists just to go to forest, and practice by yourself without contacting others, without helping others. So in Mahayana Buddhism, we very emphasize uh, uh, loving kindness and compassion. 
how to support others to learn the Dharma, how to help others to liberate from all kinds of uh, suffering. And uh, when a Bodhisattva say, I'm a Bodhisattva. And especially when a Bodhisattva uh, achieved uh, this stage of sanyata, understanding nothing we should attach to, then we say he's able to create a pure land. And then using this pure land to invite others to join the practice. Okay, this is the, uh, one uh, uh, kind of a teaching from Buddha. As a Bodhisattva, we have to have a vows to create pure land. When we say pure land, a lot of times we think, oh, pure land is uh, outside uh, this planet, in another world. Pure land is a place that we are going to go after death. Actually, I'm trying to collect this kind, correct this kind of a saying, this kind of thinking. In my understanding, pure land, pure land can be everywhere, can be achieved in any place. For example, actually, we consider Jay Buddha Temple is a pure land in Southwest area in Houston. As long as we have good parts, we have loving kindness, we study the Dharma, we don't harm any, uh, uh, anyone. Yeah, we clean the place, we don't trash the place. In this way, we can call this a pure land, certain kind of pure land. Pure land is for all Buddhists to create. And you can use your effort to create your own pure land, big or small. It doesn't matter. So over here, after we understand this teaching, then uh, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha asks Sabuti, what do you think, Sabuti? Does a Bodhisattva create a, a scenery, scenery? Serene. Serene. Serene and a beautiful Buddha feel. And uh, probably we'll answer in this way. Yes, Buddha. All Bodhisattvas, they are going to create a beautiful uh, Buddha feel. A Buddha feel. This is what we are going to answer. But somehow, uh, somebody answer in this way. No world honor one. Why? To create a uh, serene and a beautiful Buddha field is not, in fact, creating a serene and a beautiful Buddha field. That is what is called creating a serene and a beautiful Buddha field. There are three sentences uh, we wanted to remember in order to uh, 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 analyzes what is the teaching from this paragraph. Yeah. Creating beautiful Buddha land. Then uh, uh, it says that uh, uh, this is why, uh, no, to create a serene, uh, serene and a beautiful, a beautiful Buddha land is not in fact creating a serene and a beautiful Buddha field. Actually, in fact, it's not creating serene and a beautiful Buddha field. That's why it is called creating a serene and a beautiful Buddha field. There are three sentences. Let me simplify these uh, sentences by saying uh, something in this way. Bel Air, you all know Bel Air. Actually, it's not Bel Air, but we call this real Bel Air. Mm -hmm. So think it this way, Bel Air, on my right side, is a street. Uh, in ordinary thinking, everyone calls this road, this street, Bel Air. If you wanted to find where is Jade Buddha Temple, yes, you have to no, where is Bel Air in order to find the directions? So we have to recognize this 
really is uh, Belair. There is a very ordinary uh, thinking. In a school, we are teaching students to understand this kind of knowledge. This is a Belair. Another word is not Belair. This one is Belair. But in fact, actually, if we carefully analyze this, what is a Belair? Belair. We are going to discover Bel Air is not Bel Air. Bel Air is not Bel Air. And uh, can we change this rose name in the future? If you are a mayor, <laughs> maybe someday people will tell you, I'm tired of seeing Bel Air. <laughs> and uh, uh, how about let's uh, change uh, Bel Air's name to Justin Road? <laughs> it's possible, it's right. We can give this, uh, this road any name. Actually, it's changeable. And also, when you enter Bel Air Boulevard, sometimes I do this. Um, I'm entering Bel Air right now. What is the Bel Air? We are going to see uh, uh, supermarkets and uh, pawn shops. What else? Mo uh, auto zone. And the drug stores, car wash, gas stations. So what is the belay? What is the belay? Everything combined together in this space, we give it name belay. But somehow we cannot find any location. We cannot find any uh, uh, any elements, any phenomena that actually we can call this is a belay. So there's no such a thing exists we can call this belay. When we say this is a real belay, it means something there, it doesn't change at all. It will be there from the beginning until today. From today all the way to, it, to the future. So this is uh, something we have to understand. If we say this is a real, then it must be permanent. It must be unchangeable. It must be exist by itself alone. But somehow, the label of exists by having all kinds of conditions. Put them together, and we call this thing. So Belay actually is not Belay. Finally, every one of us we still have to recognize, we call this the name, we give it a name. So this is the last sentence. Um, perhaps today when I say this uh, to you, you feel it's kind of strange. Why Buddha wants to teach us something is very unusual. It's not a common. Uh, it's difficult for us to uh, to understand. Actually, this Diamond Sutra, the purpose for us to study this Sutra is we wanted to understand the real facts. By understanding real facts, then we are able to remove our attachment. And uh, we are able to uh, have a kind of a wisdom to uh, observe the reality correctly. When we have attachment, actually we are building blocks around us. We cannot see the changes. This street is changing all the time. Do you understand that? 20 years ago, before we built this temple, nothing around here. It's an open field. This street is uh, uh, very, uh, what do you call it? very quiet neighborhood. It's not busy like that. So if I attach to 20 years, what, uh, 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 attach to the phenomena of Belair before 20 years, then I'm not able to understand today's Belair. So actually, without attaching to the, uh, the phenomena, we create a free space for us for us to observe the realities day by day, minute to minute, moment to moment. 
Uh, I believe that a uh, long time ago, a few years ago, I did uh, tell you this story. It was very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, a mother came to Texas. She went to College Station to visit her son over there. The son was teaching in the University of Illinois. And uh, after the mother back to Hong Kong, some other relatives, they wanted to come to College Station to visit her son. Then the mother told uh, uh, those relatives, when you drive on Highway 6, you always go, go to uh, 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 the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the north direction. Okay. And uh, uh, after certain miles, you are going to see a big tree. <laughs> and that tree uh, looked like a, uh, a chicken. <laughs> looked like a chicken. That tree looked like a chicken. So you are going to make a right turn. After you make the right turn, now uh, uh, after a few minutes you are going to see the house. Those relatives came to the stage, drove on Highway 6, trying to find the tree that looked like chicken. <laughs> Somehow they couldn't, they couldn't find it. They checked, they checked. Finally they discovered that uh, uh, one, um, okay, one company removed the tree. They built a gas station over there. <laughs> <laughs> no more tree, no more uh, 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 chicken. Mm. So everything is changing. And uh, how can we understand reality correctly? We should not attach to anything that we see. So we maintain this kind of uh, freedom in our mind so we can absorb. We can uh, 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 clearly observe everything in front of us. For example, I'm seeing you right now. Oh, you are here. My eyes are seeing you. But my mind went back to yesterday's experience. I was so attached to someone that I talked to yesterday. I'm so attached to the previous experience. So when, I, when my mind is back into yesterday's experience, I'm not in the present anymore. Even I'm seeing you, actually, I cannot have a real contact with you. Can you understand this? So it's, a, it's really important for us to be free, free from all kinds of attachment. So we have a fresh mental stage all the time, moment to moment, in order to have this clear understanding to see things around us. This is the Buddha stage. The reason we are still not able to attain or achieve this stage because in, a, in our minds we have so many uh, uh, attachments and full of those attachments that's why we don't have enough wisdom to see everything clearly. This is the teaching. So from today, think about those three sentences. Let's simplify the sentences. Belair actually is not belair. We elevate ourselves. We free from the first level, from the knowledge level. We understand what is going on on ballet, actually? Actually, it's not ballet. It can be anything. But today, uh, if we wanted to communicate with others, to show the directions, we still have the understanding. We call this ballet. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And, uh, also, don't already think of a layer, you think of on yourself, also. Rekha Hanyi actually is not Rekha Hanyi. But you all call me Rekha Hanyi. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. In this way, 
I'm going to be free, also you are going to be free. And uh, with this attitude, we can accomplish so many things. And uh, uh, happily, without burdens. This uh, uh, my principle of doing things around the temple. And uh, when we build uh, Bodhi Center, uh, one lady asked me, at the she said, Vera Bahangi, you spend so much time, so much effort. Day and night, you are thinking how to build Bodhi Center. At the same time, how are, you going, how are you going to free yourself from all those kind of doing? I used these three sentences. Bodhi Center actually is not Bodhi Center. We call this Bodhi Center. Reverend Han Yi is not. Actually, Reverend Han Yi. They call me Reverend Han Yi. That's it. We can be free. So today is the first day we uh, read these uh, three uh, sentences in this way. And uh, next time, I want to invite you to share how you learn from this. And also, mm. Let's move to another paragraph. The Buddha said, So Sabudi, all the Bodhisattva Mahasattva. Mahasattva means great Bodhisattva. Great. Bodhisattva Mahasattva should give rise to a pure and a clear intention. In this spirit, when they give rise to this intention, they should not rely on forms, sounds, smells, tastes, tactiles, 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 objects, all objects of mind. Please read this uh, carefully. They should give rise to an intention, to an intention with their minds not dwelling anyway. Give rise to any intention with their minds not dwelling anyway. This teaching is related with the previous uh, uh, teaching. Yeah. Uh, we still use our mind, we still have an intention, but we are going to train ourselves not dwelling anyway. When Venerable Huinan heard this teaching from his teacher, the Sikh Patrick, and uh, Venerable Huinan was suddenly awakened just by listening to this uh, sentence. They should give rise to an intention with their minds not dwelling anywhere. Yin wu so zhu er shen qi xin In Chinese. Wu so zhu, no attachment, no dwelling on any objects, but with your pure intention. We still wanted to know what we wanted to do, but no attachment, no dwelling on any uh, anyway. Sabodhi, if there were someone with a body as big as Mount uh, Sameru, would you say that is uh, that his was a large body? Sabodhi answered, yes, world honored one, very large. Why? What the Tragata says is not a large body. That is known as a large body. So in this paragraph, so the way somebody answered the Buddha, he actually showed the Buddha. When we use the language, I know the meaning why we, we are saying this a lot, that is small. No attachment. When you have no attachment, it's all right for you to say large or small. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, when Yami come to the temple, if we you know, uh, stand up with him, he's a tall man. We still can say Yami is very tall. It's okay. As long as no attachment. 
So every time when Buddha you know, teach disciples, and uh, Buddha say, said uh, uh, this, every word I say, actually just like fingers, I'm trying to point the moon, point, point to, uh, you to see the moon. If you attach to language, the words, you are just seeing the finger, you are not seeing the moon. So you better to see the moon, don't attach to the finger. It's the same thing. But sometimes, if we, we still need to use fingers, it's okay, use fingers to point, oh, that is the moon. But we're not teaching people to attach to the finger. Today, do you think uh, we still have time? Um, maybe for a couple of questions. And a couple of questions, okay. Uh, uh, do we have a few, uh, any uh, member to practice? Uh, yeah, I'm going to so finish uh, half the sheets. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, do you feel five minutes, uh, five minutes is enough or for you all? You need yes, one? Five minutes? Okay. What I'll try to do this time, if you don't mind, is it's about time of getting ring the bell and we have one minute to wrap up. Is that okay? Alright. Today, mm. Mm. Oh, I'm going to uh, uh, finish my talk uh, uh, over here and allow you to uh, use a few minutes to share your thoughts on Anything you want to ask, uh, uh, I will welcome you to, uh, to raise your hand and ask questions. Uh, yes, Ray? Uh, the, the part about practice of the Buddha under the Buddha, the Pankara, was that in a previous life? Yes, oh. yes. No. Huh? It's not in not his previous life, it's a, the previous Buddha. But it is previous life, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, sorry. Many lives previous. Yes. 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 You will attend somehow to that. Before the, the lifetime, you are priest and later you can do that. That's the final reason. Am I right? Um, I'm sorry. You are asking Shakamani Buddha? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, all right. Um, normally, normally Buddha say Shakamani Buddha uh, was born in India. 2500 years ago, and uh, uh, when he was uh, uh, about 29, he went to the forest to uh, practice with uh, teachers. After six years, and uh, he achieved enlightenment. So he became Buddha yes. at the moment. Yes, yes. But um, from previous life, yes. I I think I heard the actual he always attend some Buddha. He 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 didn't mm. say he didn't attend. He was not late late lifetime. Uh, that is another kind of a thing. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, unless there are certain material we can study, otherwise uh, I feel it's uh, uh, not suitable for me to analyze more on this thing. Mm -hmm. And also. Um, it was very interesting for me to see uh, a mantra Buddha stage, a mantra Bodhisattva statue in Hong Kong this time. Uh, do you know there is an uh, Asian society? I think uh, funded by Rockefeller Foundation and other foundations. They are going to build a center in Houston. They are going to uh, uh, finish as soon. They already have at uh, a place in Hong Kong, donated by Hong Kong government. That place was uh, uh, storage uh, 
uh, rooms for uh, uh, gunpowder weapons for the British, uh, British government. And uh, uh, they have a thick wall over there around uh, uh, the place. But another day, it become, uh, uh, becomes a museum. And in the past few months, they display so many Buddhist statues, including Buddha statues and also other Bodhisattva uh, statues. I found one statue was a miniature Bodhisattva statue. They discovered in Thailand. Thailand. When you hear miniature Bodhisattva, what do you have in your mind? The future Buddha. The future Buddha. So in the future, we're going to have another Buddha will become uh, 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 coming to uh, this world and continue to teach the Dharma. Something is very interesting. When you see, uh, when you uh, go to China, you are going to see Vajra Buddha in a very heavy uh, fat body, uh, laughing uh, uh, face as a monk, and uh, carry it back. When you go to uh, uh, other place uh, like uh, 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 west of China, you are going to see another Maitreya Buddha just like uh, uh, the, the uh, statue in at the Bodhi Center. It's not fat. It's a very slim. But this Maitreya Buddha discovered from Thailand actually look like Thai people. Look like Thai people. Wearing a skirt. <coughs> and, uh, and having a face oh, just like Thai people. Very interesting. Yes. I hope they are going to ship those statues to Houston one day. So I will in, um, if I have the news, I will invite every one of you to take a look. So in the future, we're going to have other Buddhas. Uh, any other thoughts? So yes. after he became a Sakya, he became a Buddha, he yes. was a Bodhisattva for many lives. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> In Buddhism, that is correct. Um, when we say, I wanted to become a Buddha, before I actually uh, uh, become a Buddha, I have to become a Bodhisattva. Okay, as a Bodhisattva, I wanted to cultivate my wisdom and uh, I wanted to cultivate uh, my compassion at the same time. So, uh, uh, by having wisdom and a compassion at the same time, we are qualified as a Bodhisattva. And also, we are able to achieve Buddhahood. If you don't have any questions, uh, then just simply um, uh, remember those three sentences. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, creating uh, a Buddha field. Actually, it's not creating a Buddha field. Um, but we call this creating a Buddha field. If this is too complicated, then you say, See, Bel Air actually is not Bel Air, but we call this Bel Air. And uh, see if this teaching can eradicate our attachment from our subconsciousness. Be careful. Actually, uh, it's not easy for us to say, I wanted to liberate from my own thoughts. It's not easy. The way we think, the way I feel, the way I like, the way I don't like, actually it, it's always deep in our heart. And uh, it's not easy to get rid of. Uh, so by having this kind of understanding, we're going, we are going to establish right thinking. When we have a right thinking, actually we are guiding our mind on the right direction. And when we guide our minds on the right direction, it doesn't mean that we don't do this, we don't do that. 
Yes, we're going to avoid the negative actions, but at the same time, we're going to increase right action, good action. When we have those good intentions, but we never, never dwelling on anywhere, anything. So we still be can free, uh, can be freely, you know, uh, uh, living in uh, daily life without obstacles, without afflictions. Otherwise, when we do bad, of course, the karma will create bad consequences in our life. Even we are doing good, but we still have a very strong ego inside us. This is what I want. This is I. I'm a, I'm a bigger, I'm a better, and uh, uh, I always wanted to keep everything that belongs to me. Then you're going to discover that uh, even we're doing something good, but at the same time, we still have troubles with others. Troubles, obstacles in daily life. So this is the reason for us to uh, study Diamond Sutra. This is the highest level of Buddha's teaching. That's why it's difficult, but it's very important. Without this understanding, we cannot achieve enlightenment. Thank you.